What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast one more time. As always, your host, Nelson Rodriguez Jr., author of Montana Method. Today, I have a very, very special treat for you guys. An old friend of mine from over a decade ago that I have not seen in a long time. We get to reconnect live here in front of you guys, get to catch up on a lot of old stuff. Please welcome the Alpha Wolf himself, leader of the Wolf Pack, dominating all industries he's a part of badass motherfucker Isaac B Global I've been out here hustling all my life every day we get into it really I hear any streets that stay at night like there's nothing to it when I was going through it dog I never got your call I never asked for nothing no Man, big dog. Hey, that's a sick intro. Now I have to step it up today. Let's get it. <laughs> What's up, man? It's good to see you. How you been? Man, been winning, brother. Been winning. I know we connected a little bit on the messaging. You've been through a bit. I've been through a bit, but we at the top now, son. Let's go. You literally, you're like not just a different, you, you literally look like a different person. You know what I mean? You you look different. You talk different. You sound different. Everything about you is is a totally different version of you, man. I, I love it. It's it's really it's awesome. I, my thing, like when I see people evolve and get better and like level up in life, to me that's that's such a blessing because I, I've been able to do it in my own life, and it's kind of surreal to see other people do it too. You know what it's, I mean? It's fucking cool, man. I, and I do hear that because I fly back to Miami quite a bit to see my daughter. Uh, and I, and I've heard that, but that was the fucking goal, bro. I didn't like the bitch that I was. I didn't like mm. the money that was in my bank account. I didn't like being skinny fat. I just didn't like being the fly on the wall, bro. Mm. I want to be that motherfucker when I enter the room. You know I'm here. You don't even need to look my way. I wanted you to fucking feel my frequency, you know? Mm. So I appreciate you noticing that because that's the goal, bro. I wanted to kill the bitch. And create a new man. And then give him to the world. Woof. Super, super, super important, man. You gotta... The person that you are today has to die in order for you to become the person that's worthy of accomplishing the goals you want in your life. Like, who you are today has to die completely. It, you can't even... A shadow of that guy can't even exist tomorrow in order for you to get to where you want to go to. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's... It's like that process of, of like incinerating yourself and rising from the ashes and then doing it again and again and again that, that finally like turns you into this indestructible like force of nature that can do anything, you know? And it's, that process is painful, but it's so worth it. So yeah. worth it, dude. It's everything, so bro. I, I just went through that process again last night. So I believe in, I believe in the law of subtraction. Mm. Which is like, I don't need to do more shit. I just need to subtract shit. Mm. So we got basically to like almost past the half month of the year, you know, half mark. And I started getting comfortable, you know? Mm. And I'm like, I, I, I'm not the man that I look up to. I'm not my the superhero I would, you know, praise. So I sat down, closed the room, put my phone on airplane mode. And I made a list again. And I do this like on a regular basis, Nelson. What is the extra shit that has nothing to do with the man I want to want to be? And mm. I made a list. Brrrp. And here we're here today. Boom. I feel better. I feel stronger because that shit is already deducted, you know? Law of subtraction. I love it. It's not so much about adding on new things. It's about getting rid of the stuff that doesn't serve you. Bro. I'm with it. It's, That's... it's everything, bro. I paid my mentor 20K. And we talked, and uh, this was last year. And he looked at everything. And he's like, dog, you've been doing the right stuff for years. But you got way too many hoes. <laughs> you got, you're doing way too much drugs. You're partying too much. You're on jets and yachts too much. Why don't you take all that shit out and just keep doing what you're doing? Mm. Dog. Dog. Overnight. Everything changed at a speed like you can't even believe. And that's what I teach in the Wolfpack, that exact process. That's awesome, man. I love it. 
Speaking of which, so this is, let me tell you a crazy story. So, so I get out of prison, right? And I'm just trying to figure out my life and what I'm going to do. The podcast, the podcast has been posting the whole time I was gone. So it's starting to get some traction. And then I'm just like, man, what kind of story am I trying to build here? Like, what do I want to do? And I had this vision for, I started building this, this kind of like painting of, of who I want to be and what I want to accomplish. And then I find Wes Watson's page, bro. And no I'm like, way. yo, that's what I want. I want to, this is what I want. And then I see you, bro. And I'm like, look at my boy. Look <laughs> at my boy, dog. Oh my God. It was crazy. And I'm like, yo, talk about the universe aligning, man. It was yeah. crazy how I, how we reconnected. It was it was it was insane. You couldn't have made that up. You couldn't have made it up. I got goosebumps, dog. I got goosebumps. <laughs> Seriously, it's I'm here like envisioning who I want to be. I find Wes's content and I'm like, yeah, this is who I want. This is who I want to be. I want to be like this guy. I want to write a great story. Came out of prison, built a brand for himself, made a lot of money. Re reconstructed his body, it became a new person. And then I see you like, oh shit, like he's my friend. He did that. Wait, no. Oh, oh my God. I could do it too. Like, dude, it's crazy, bro. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy, man. And that's uh, why I like, I'll always pay to get connected to these great people. And like, I, I'll, on an average, I'm into these things like six figures a year, but I make much more than that because right. of that. Cause I get like I was texting Wes last night. That's the guy that makes three million a month. Right. Um, just to have that connection, that that plug into that frequency, is sick. And boom! Now I didn't even know it connected to you. Now I know. It's just you don't know how far these things go, bro. It's it's always a good investment. It's investing in yourself is is key. It's so key. Everybody, it's funny because everybody's always trying to find out, oh, should I invest in this and crypto and real estate? Fuck all that shit. You got to invest in you, bro. No. You know what I mean? Like, get, buy the course, learn the skill, start exercising, buy, pay a, fit, a personal trainer, buy, buy that course on fitness, like whatever, it, whether it's physical, spiritual, mental, whatever it is, invest in you, man. That's the infinite returns. I, and I'm sure you, you feel the same way. The infinite returns that have that have come my way be from a book I've read, from a podcast I listened to, from a conference I went to, from some advice I got from a mentor. Like those infinite returns are daily. Every single day I see some sort of return from one little lesson I learned here or something I'm able to implement there. And yeah, man, like invest in you. 100%. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and as far as the money's concerned, th there's a uh, there's a rule. Right, your income's gonna increase as much as your self development. Mm. So, I mean, for years I was chasing the paper, and that got me into a bit of trouble. You know, as we all know, we all got you know, you know. And uh, the moment I started chasing character, shit mm. char started changing. I mm. literally this morning I woke up, opened my eyes, I got this thing. Like I write my goals right away. Second, I opened my eyes. And I wrote, you know, I have a couple mil in the bank and this and that. And then I scratched it out. This literally happened this morning. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I chasing this this paper? So I scratched all that shit out real quick. This, this morning, 5 a.m. And then I wrote, I keep my word. I run the tightest program. I never miss a rep. I lead my people to success. Like, I'm like, that's the shit that's going to fucking give me paper, chasing mm. the man i want to become paper come dog paper come yo facts man i love it so it is all that other stuff is just an end result of being that person every day yeah that's all that is like the, the money the accolades the attention like all that all that shit it's just a byproduct the the cause and the reason it's gonna keep happening is because of who you are as a person who you are as a person, what type of value you're delivering to the marketplace. Um, so I got multiple mentors, right, in different areas. And I was sitting with one who taught me the construction game. This guy owns buildings all over Los Angeles. And uh, we're in his hotel room, just kicking it, shooting the shit. And I said exactly what you said. And he looked at me and he flipped it on me. And he said, ah, 
And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. T- tell me what you're thinking, Shy. That's his name. And he goes, listen, you got, you can't look at money just as a bot product. You got to look at it as a scoreboard. Mm. He goes, if the paper low, if there's not enough numbers in the bank account, you're not shooting enough. Your, your score is very low. You're not doing a good job at what you're doing. I like it. I'm like, damn. It's a like scoreboard. It. Mm. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, I got more numbers than you because I'm doing a better job at delivering more value in the construction space than you are. If you got low numbers, I don't care how much you think you are this or the best salesman or I don't give a fuck. Look at the score. You got zero. Barcelona's got four. You're mm. fucked. You ain't good. Step up the fucking game. And I'm like, damn. Now that's some it. fucking game right there. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. He's right, though. He's right. If if you're not up to bat, if not if you're not shooting the basket, if you're not swinging, like yo, you gotta take the swings. Like you gotta go for it. If you're not doing that, then what are you doing? You know what I mean? You're not you're not playing the game. That's for sure. You're definitely yep. not playing the game. And you're not good at the game, bro. I got I I was just on a call the other day. The guy's like, I'm the best salesperson. You've ever seen, let me come work for your company. I'm like, how long have you been a salesman? He tells me six years. I'm like, great, how much you got in your account? He tells me 20K. I'm like, you are trash, bro. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, he must have been like, what? What? <laughs> That's crazy, dog. You're right, though. You're right because if you, if the score is not there, something's off. Something's you know, way off. Like if if you don't have that, it's just it's the same thing in any area, whatever area. It doesn't even have to be financial. You could talk about physical, mental, spiritual, whatever. If if the result you want isn't there, it's because something in the process is off, and you're not you're not even playing the game. Right, right man. So. It. Everything's byproduct and should have a byproduct result. So when it comes to business, obviously the score is money, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in fitness, it's, dude, you have abs, you're fat, right? If you're a teacher and all your fucking students have fucking C's and F's, you're a trash teacher. I don't care how many fucking books you read and which, which university you came from. You're trash. Your kids got C's and you got all of them on, on ADHD medication Dude, you can't grab a kid's attention. You're not doing a good job at being a teacher. Go fuck yourself. Don't tell me you're from the university of my dick. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) You know I'm right. You know. You're right. No, but you're right. Like, I see people all the time do, do it where they're like, yeah, you don't know who I am. You don't know what you've done. Listen, what you've done is irrelevant if you have no results. Exactly. What you have done is irrelevant if you have no results. Results yep. are the name of the game. We live life for results. Yep. Results are the name of the game. Like That's if you're not it. playing for results, you're very confused. It, you're either very confused or you just have no clue what you're working for in life. Yep. Straight up. Yep. Results are what we are all working for. Results are the only thing that matter. It, it, it does, man. I, I don't know if it's like the only thing that matters. Because the process, it, I believe, the day-to-day, especially when, like, you're building a brand, you're not going to get a result for a long time. You're right. But as but long as pro- you, you see some results, you're going to have to see something. Something needs to go like this. If it's not going like this, dog. Exactly. So you could be with a guy that's overweight. He's like, dude, I know my fitness, okay? How much weight you're losing? Uh, I'm not. Okay, you're trash. But, dude, I've been losing two pounds a week consistently for the last six months. Okay. Okay. We might need to fine tune things, but hey, I can't say shit. Right? That's the result. 100%. I'm with it. The process, but to go in line with what we're saying, though, the reason you're going through the process and you're taking the steps is to get results. The process is important because it turns you into the person that can get results, but you're doing it to get results. You know what I mean? You're not doing it like, yeah, you got to be the person. But the reason you want to become the person is for the, re- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, it's kind of interchangeable, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And 
what I what I love about what you're doing is like you're still like you're accomplishing the goals and you're already there, but you already as you're accomplishing, like you already see another another result and you're already working for that result in spite of the results I already have. Like that's what I like about you. Most people they'll be getting the results and they'll be like, all right, this is good enough, you know. I think uh, I think I can say I've done something. You're like, no, forget all that shit. Let's keep going. You know what I mean? Because if I can do this, that means I I grew up into the person that can get this result. Now the question is, how much more can I grow and how much bigger of a result can I get? Right? Like, it's it's exciting. Like just that question of like, if I came this far, how much farther can I go? That question Dude, keeps me going every day, man. It really every does. Every fucking day, bro. And in every single fucking area. Like, I personally worked for Grant Cardone, right? I used to nope. work in his office. And most people are cool with that. They're like, hey, I work for Grant, man. No, fuck that. I did it. Got it. Boom. I was out. Why are you quitting? I want more. Then I opened mm -hmm. up businesses in Hawaii. Wasn't enough. Then I opened up some construction business out here in the Pacific Northwest. Not enough. Now I'm fucking expanding and scaling. Because, like... You know you can do more. You know mm. it. You know it, dog. Shit. I really believe in that inner voice, man. I, I do. And if you don't fucking listen to it, you're fucked. And, and it gets louder in the weirdest ways. So first, it's like a whisper. Like, hey, dump your girlfriend. She a hoe. It's a little. <laughs> it's a little one. Hey, you're a little fat boy. It's a little. You don't listen to it. And then it gets louder. You should drop the drugs, bro. Hey, you should quit that job, homie. And it gets louder and louder and louder. And you know it gets louder because we've all felt it. Problem is, if you don't listen to that voice, it's the weirdest thing not to freak you out. But then you see it in the physical universe and bad shit happens. People Yo. get arrested. You get cheated on. You get a cardiac arrest. You get an overdose. You know what I mean? Yep. For for me, I got I got aggravated felony. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, mm. I gotta chill with <laughs> with the violence. I wasn't listening to that voice. And then it was almost a DUI. Oof, let's get sober. Second it's in your face, it's already a little late. But mm. it's not too late, right? You gotta listen right here. Those those things that show up in your life, those bad things, are a result of being incongruent with, with who you, you know you're supposed to be. Like yeah. When, that voice that's inside of you, whether you want to call it, you know, your soul or, or like some divine, for, whatever you want to call that, right? Like when you ignore that and you know that's the right thing to listen to, bad things will always happen, no always. matter what. I don't, I don't care as long as it's obviously you're listening to the good voice, not not like your ego and the shit that's telling you to like do bad things, but right. that that pure voice that's inside you that's always trying to tell you to be the best version of you whenever in life I've ever ignored that voice, my life just takes a, a terrible U-turn, horrible. And every time, I mean, we can, I have so many different examples, you know, like one of the biggest ones is going to prison, right? Like I knew I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. How, That's but, not wait, a big deal. Wait, I, I'm sure you've said it a million times on your show, but just give me a short synopsis. Uh, what'd you do? How long did you go in for? Sure. So back in 2017, 2018, um, I, I met a guy who paid me some money to refer some people to some clinics. It didn't seem like a big deal. I wasn't making millions of dollars. I was just making a little bit of extra money. So, you know, I'm just making a couple hundred bucks here, a couple thousand bucks there. And then the guy gets arrested and I'm like, all right, so whatever the guy got arrested, I, you know, obviously I can't do this anymore. So I stopped. I just, I don't do it anymore. Three years later in 2021 is when the FBI comes banging on my door and I get arrested. Right. So I, I get, they bring that, I'm out on, on, pro, uh, uh, what's it called? Pre-trial or I'm out on bond for a year and a half. And throughout that whole year and a half, I'm just thinking to myself, like, fuck man, like, why is this happening to me? All this stuff. And at the end of the day, I could only bring up one response within myself. How many times did you say not to do this? And you did it anyway. How many times did that voice, right? Tell you, Nelson. What are you doing, dog? You should have been doing this. You've never been in trouble in your whole life. You're putting yourself at risk. Don't fuck it up. You're being an asshole. 
Don't do it. And guess what? The ego, I listen to the, ah, it's not that much money. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A year and a half later, two, two, whatever it was in July of 2021. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so I was out on bond for a year and a half. I got sentenced in October of 2022. I got eight months. I went in in January of this year. I got out in May, uh, May 25th. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, man. So that that's me. And, and the cool thing was, since I was out on bond for so long, it gave me time to really think about my life. So I wrote the book and then I started thinking about what else I could do, build a brand, all this knowledge that I had in life. You know, I had built a few businesses. I had done pretty well. So I was like, you know what? I want to bring me to the world. How can I do that? So I started the podcast. I started the podcast in June of last year and I left a bunch of pre-recorded episodes before I left and it started picking up traction. And now That's here we are. Cool. Yeah, I, man. I, I like it, bro. I watched a few of the videos, of course. You know, I had to check it out what you were doing. It's a nice vibe, bro. And, I, and you do the Tony Montana, bro. Just, just right. Just <laughs> correct. Thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So good for you, man. That's sick. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, so here I am. And what's exciting is things were, were in motion while I was away. And now I'm here. And things are just... They're, they're just going and like I have a, a YouTube short right now that's closing in on a hundred thousand views. You know, the YouTube channel is doing well. I'm getting different calls, big, big time guests. that want to be on the show. So things are going well. And this is just the beginning. You know what I mean? This was just kind of doing things on autopilot. It wasn't me going in, in, all in. So now it's like, all right, now I'm really going to put some dedication and focus into this. Let, let's see how far I can take it. If I'm really, really going in and putting in the work that needs to be put in, you know what I mean? So yeah, man. Exciting times. You know Amazing, what I mean? So, brother. Put, put in the time and literally never stop. Never. Yeah, man. We, Podcasting we were, is a great space. It's, uh, I think I've, I've found a space where I can really, all, all my best attributes and all the things I'm good at, I can put them all in one avenue and let it shine. You know what I mean? Let so, it yeah. shine. And the reality is people like a hero that was broken down and, and taken mm. up and I mean, I've had a lot of friends that went in and uh, they came out very different, bro. They came out worse. It's unfortunate. I, I've I've seen some people do the same. And with me, I just, it was a short enough time to where I, it, it was long enough and short enough to where it didn't change what I, it didn't change my core. My core was always like, I knew I needed to improve as a person. So it was a short enough time to where that always stayed aligned, but it was long enough to where I could really think about what I wanted and the things I wanted to align with when I got out. And, you know, I, I lost a lot of weight in there. I read 31 books in four and a half months. So, yeah, it's just I just spent time on me. You know what I mean? A lot of people in there were just eating shit, playing dominoes all day, talking like I wasn't interested in any of that. I was there to spend the, the time as productive as possible. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I gave it what, what I saw it as was it was a reset for my life. I was going to have to start at zero when I got out, but that zero is go was going to be a strong foundation to where I'll never have to rebuild ever again. You know That's what I mean? Fucking phenomenal. You know, what's interesting. You know, what's interesting. So during the time you were in, I wasn't in, but I did completely go ghost on my entire life. Mm. So last year I made a good amount of money, thank God. You know, that shit gets to your head. The bottles, the cocaine, the you know, four girlfriends, the cars, the jets. I mean, <laughs> shit was stupid. You know, but I decided that January comes, so when you got picked up, I would disappear and completely go in complete solitude. Mm. You know, I kept one little side piece, you know, that we got to eat, but solitude, bro. I would not go out, no restaurants, no, no, nothing. Mm. Wake up at between 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. every day, seven days a week, perfect macros, reading, building my two businesses, the Wolf Pack, and literally that same thing. You said you got out in May? Yeah. So my birthday is May 29. That's when I got out. I threw a huge penthouse party. I'll send you the video. Sick. <laughs> no. And I thought nobody would come. Because I literally 
disappeared. And that was my speech. The whole city pulled through, which was dope. But I'm like, guys, thank you for coming. I just, <laughs> I thought two people would show up, you know, because I haven't talked to any motherfuckers in like five and a half months, six mm -hmm. months. I think it's a blessing. And I think more people should use that, you know? I mean, Hemingway, he would go in the forest, bro. Steve Jobs fucking does it all the time, bro. Countless mm. fucking... John D. Rockefeller had a home away from the city where he would mm. retract himself. Monks, Mormons, I mean, Jews fucking... After high school, they all go to Jerusalem and take themselves out of the... Just to rebuild. Right. That was a blessing you don't even know, bro. Yeah. I'm sure you it, do. I'm sure you do. But it's... it's it might have been the, the best thing that ever happened to me, straight up. I'm, I'm sure, man. I, that environment, I, I can't explain what that. When you isolate yourself, something happens in your mind where, where we live in a society where your, your mind is constantly penetrated by outside influence, right? What this person thinks, what that person thinks. This video on Instagram, this video on TikTok, this video on YouTube, and it's constant stimulation and blah, 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 yeah. blah. That process, what it does is it, your own imagination begins to die. Like you, your own process of seeing things in your mind and interpreting life dies out. So when you stop doing that, you have to go on like, and to be, to be real with you, it wasn't until the first month where I had to kind of detox from regular society and have all those images and all those videos that I watch and all that stuff to be away from all that. After the first month is when I really realized, like, I felt my imagination coming back to me. I was writing every day, four or five times a day. I was meditating every day. I was working out two, three times a day. I was eating right. I was drinking a gallon of water a day. So that process of, like, building new habits and, like, detoxing all the old bad ones, my mind just renewed. I felt my mind coming back to me, and I felt my imagination getting rejuvenated and the way I was able to envision was unlike anything in my life, in my entire 30 years of, of living. The, that renewed sense of being able to envision things was so, like, invigorating. You know what I mean? Like, Dude. it's almost like I had read it. Like, I was rediscovering who I was. It's not, it's not really learning anything new. It's just rediscovering what was already in here. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because we kind of did it at the same time. That, Dude, that, that, I got goosebumps, my boy. I got goosebumps crazy. right now. Because that's exactly... this. We should make a short clip and like collab on it on, on the actual page on Instagram. For sure. Uh, I got goosebumps because that's exactly <laughs> what I did. Solitude, I put everybody on mute. Literally, all my friends mute, mute, everybody. mute, story, mute post because I didn't want to see it. Yep. I wasn't going out. I wasn't talking to anybody. And after the first month, kind of like what you said, boom, I started finding Isaac. I started writing. I started envisioning the man I want to be. I started, my voice got a little fucking deep over that month. I started getting more tattered. Oh, everything changed. Literally, when I came out, it was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, man. And we I'll all need to take that time, bro, to like, so right now we got something called Seafair, right? We're all taking the yachts out. But right after, I even posted, I'm like, monk mode coming. Sunday, boom, I'm going back into solitude on purpose because I miss it. I miss that accelerated growth and, and self-improvement and the business goes, poof, everything just. Mm. Plus, I want a Ferrari, bro. That's what I really want. Let's go. <laughs> you got it. You, did you drive one of Wes's? And you were like, yo, I got to buy this car? <laughs> Bro, I, I'll tell you what, man. I went to his house, Rancho Santa Fe. Maybe four or five million dollars worth of whips. Bro. I sat in a million dollar SF90. And I said, dog, I want nothing less. So a lot of people were asking me, hey, don't you miss going to this venue or having these people around you? Because I was like, you know, between Miami, Hawaii. And Seattle, which are my three places I go to the most, I know everybody all the time. They're like, you don't miss the this and the that. I'm like, dog, no, no. If you knew I was with this chick the other night and we're hanging out, she goes, why do you wake up at four? I'm like, if you know where I'm going, if you know where I'm headed, if you know what I'm building, you'd be up at two, bitch. I didn't mm. say bitch. 
but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, baby, probably, but I said, you'd be up. I'm excited, dog. And it's these quick thrills. They're so cheap. And if everybody has access to them, it, it ain't it. Mm. It ain't it. I mean, 100%. shit. So God bless solitude, bro. I, I, I recommend it all the time to my people in the Wolf Pack. You know, it's, Definitely. it's a blessing. I'm with you, man. The wolf, those lone wolves are typically the ones who who are the strongest, right? So, that solitude, it's it's real, man. And there's there's something about it. Just being able to really tune everything. That focus, focus is lost nowadays. No one can focus. Nobody can focus. Oh shit! They can't read two pages. Two pages. Two pages. I tell people I read a chapter of a book every day and they're like, oh, my God, how do yeah. you do that? And I say by sitting my ass down in a chair and reading the book until I finish the chapter. Yeah. Not, oh, page two. Oh, oh, my God. This chick just DM me. No, bro. Put the phone down. Turn it off for an hour and read the chapter, dog. Like Fuck. how you feel. Your feelings are going to betray you. Your feelings are, are bullshit. Like your feelings are irrelevant. Set the goal and do it. It's, it doesn't matter how you feel. It matters that you get shit done in spite of how you feel. Hell yeah, bro. It's your fucking program, man. People talking about, man, I'm, I'm not motivated. Well, of course you're not fucking motivated. You only have L's, son. Bro. But bro. It, I, I tell them, bro, let me give you my, my fucking program. I get them up at 4.30. They have to hit their macros. They have to finish their fucking exercise. I make them write their regrets in the morning because your regrets are the compass to what you should fix. Mm. Now they know what not to do that day. And then go to fucking sleep and stay sober. Mm. Like, by the time it's noon, I got 32 W's. Of course I walk around with swag. I love it. You wake up, you DM your chick, maybe you jack off, you move ass slow, you eat some crap in the morning. I'll smoke you every day. You're walking around with L's, dog. Of course you're not motivated. Shit, like you said, turn your fucking phone off for a second. You know? Seriously. Seriously, bro. Turn the phone off because that's the source of the biggest problem. You're only listening to what other people are trying to tell you. Fuck all that shit, man. I don't want to listen to other people. I only want to listen to the people who have the results I want. I only want to listen to the people who are the people I want to be like. And guess what? Social media, yeah, you have access to those people, but what you have way more access to is to all the people you don't want to be like. <laughs> all the people who are wasting their time commenting on other people's posts the whole day. You know what I mean? I don't know about I don't know about you, Isaac, but me and any other successful person I know, they don't go on YouTube and they don't go on TikTok and they're not like, oh, you suck, or hating on other nope. people's shit. Like nope. who has time, I got to time do that? for that? Anybody who has time to, to be worried about other people's lives, you have way too much time in your hands and you need to focus on you. Straight for up. sure. Now, now look, I'm not gonna say I'm fucking perfect, right? There's a lot of times like I'll be on stories which is why I mute a lot of people's stories. And, you know, oh, man, where's she at? What they doing? Oh, they're doing that. And then mm -hmm. right away I catch myself, fuck, mute story. Because mm -hmm. we get into, like, that FOMO shit. Because for anybody that's watching, we make it look good, but it's a lot of lonely time. Because not everybody's at your frequency. Now, there's two parts with the lone wolf, right? You got to have your lone wolf time. Where you're fucking focused on yourself, mm, but you important. cannot be selfish and you got to grow a wolf pack. You can't build a big seven, eight figure business by yourself. Not, not possible. And whatever you're building self-development as a lone wolf, your job in this world is to give it back. Mm. So you need the wolf pack. You need people looking up. You need associates and collections and collaborations and, it's, you know, it's a must and partnerships. But the lone wolf part's a must. It's it just not. It, it's not as sexy as we make it sound. Let's just call it what it is. It's it's quiet. Like, let me tell you. Let me tell you what it is. It's quiet. It's lonely. It's repetitive. That's what it is, man. What there's a few moments where you feel like the shit, which is the workouts, or where you pull up in your six figure car. Yeah, dog. That's what's up. But most of the time. It ain't that sexy. It's just, it's just not. <laughs> it's 
It's quiet. It's light. It's repetitive. Mm. But I'd rather that and win any day than be the fucking thrill chaser that I was doing coke and have a bunch of girls. And Nah, man. I like this life, bro. I'm in control of it. Mm. That's what it's about. It's about purpose, man. We seek all that cheap shit because there's you feel the hole inside you and you want to fill it. But the problem is you're trying to fill it with things that, that have no weight. No matter how much of that stuff you fill yourself with, it's never going to be enough. You know it, what I mean? It's never enough. Never. It's never. And I've tried, bro. On my mama. I've been with the most beautiful women in the world. I've went to the craziest parties. I've been on yachts. I swear you think you were with, uh, what's that guy with the beard and the tattoos and the guns? What's his name? The one with the, the beard, the tattoos, and the... The poker uh, player. Oh, Dan Bilzerian. Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. Yeah, you pop... I'll show you videos of this weekend. Like, you know... And then That's you the drink, and then the you world. do the Coke, and then you do the Molly, and then you... It's crazy. You... It never fulfills you, ever. Mm -hmm. You always feel like shit on Monday. But you're stuck in the loop, so you can't get out. Whereas our path, what we're doing right now, I know about you, man. I wake up happy as shit. I look in the mirror. I'm like, yeah, I'm that guy. I'm him. 100%. I'll take that any day. 100%, man, because now you're fulfilling yourself with purpose. And purpose, you feel the fulfillment when it's purpose. It's not... You know, the, the partying and the women and the drugs and all that garbage. It's it's what what's supposed to be in here, which is purpose. Because the yep. purpose-driven man is the one who can lead those people. You know what I mean? The reason you're a lone wolf and you do all that thing is to become a better leader for your people. You know what I mean? To go back to yep. your group, find people who want to follow you and motivate them, inspire them to be better, to be like you. So at the end of the day, me personally, like, I always bring it back to purpose. Always bring it back to purpose. Whenever I get, I get veered off. I feel obstacle. I feel myself. I just go back. All right. I'm not, let me get, what's my purpose? Boom. And I always keep that in the forefront of my mind. Super, super, super important for me, man. Purpose is everything. I would be nowhere if I didn't have a purpose. And that's what I, like I feel that, like. Brother. Yeah, man. If, if you don't have a purpose in life, if you haven't found your purpose, your goal should be to find your purpose. And then once you have it, fight for it with everything you got, dog. Because the dream is all we got, Isaac. What else do we have? The dream is all we got. Bought my balls and my word, like Montana says. <laughs> Straight up, man. The, my dream is all I got, man. I got nothing else. And yep. I'm going to fight for it with all I got. Straight up, until I get there. And then when I get there, I'm going to build a new dream, and I'm going to go after that one. Just like my boy Isaac. Let's get it, man. Let's fucking get <laughs> Bro, that's why I preach sobriety a lot, man. Yes. It's and I never thought it was a thing. I think this would be a good place to wrap up if, if you agree. But uh, I feel like you can't listen to your heart and your congruence and your purpose and all that stuff we're talking about if your brain is foggy and fucking loaded with drugs or hangovers from the last mm. night. You can't even listen to yourself. Because you're trying to repair all the fucked up cells you killed the night before, you know? 100%. I think first step is sobriety. Like, yo, get sober so you can finally get to know yourself without the influence and the fog, you know? Mm. And I think then you can find purpose, man. You know, you can create the man you want to become. Super important. And I think we should add a caveat. That includes drugs, alcohol. It also includes food it also includes porn women like there's many vices that we can talk about that people use and then they're like oh no no but i'm not a drug addict oh no 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 i'm not an alcoholic no 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 no. you're the same as them the only difference is the vice of choice all right so let's get that straight there's many of us who choose vices that are legal right and because they're legal and we're not criminals we think we're better than other people and we're not so sobriety meaning any vice you got like get rid of it 100%. I like I'm that. Me. I like that. And for you motherfuckers smoking weed, man, I don't know if you're a weed smoker, but I'm going to say it anyways, bro. There's a reason the government fucking makes that legal. 
Mm. Just think about it. There's a reason they push all that shit, make it legal. It's not just a tax money, bro. Like, I'll smoke anybody in my industry if they're a weed smoker because they slow as shit. If we're at a closing table and you're a weed smoker and I'm not, I'm going to get the deal every time. Because by the time you come up with an, boom, I took her client and your mother. Yep. I'm quick. This is a wolf beast wolf type of world, man. 2023 is fast. You trying to slow down? Mm. And then munch? And then get fat? And then wake up late the next day? Bitch. Nah, man. <laughs> no, man. I'm with you. 150%, dog. You got to put yourself in an advantageous position. The world is so fast and there's so many things that are going against you already that if you put more obstacles in your own way, you're already lost. You Fact. know what I mean? You got to put yourself in a position to win. Fact. I'm with you, brother. Isaac, thank you so much for being on the show. This has been amazing. Uh, we got to do this again. I, I feel like this is probably the beginning of a, of a, of a good partnership. So I'm going to ask three questions. This is how I wrap up all my podcasts. So question number one, what inspires you? Self-development. Ah, I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> because you, ah, it's like, how much better can I get? I ask myself that every day. Whenever I get a W, it's like, man, if I did this much, how much more can I do? Development of self, bro. Just chipping away at the ash floor. You know what I mean? Non-stop. I, just, I know I can do more. Breeze, brother. I love it. Question number two. What's next for Isaac? Next is, uh, I have a company called Bellevue Home Builders, which I've been building pretty much by myself. Now my goal is to bring five to 10 new salespeople and make them all multi six figure earners. That's mm. one for my business. As far as myself, I want to get to 200 pounds and stay ripped. I'm 185. And then as far as Wolfpack, I need it to be, man, right now there's a few dozen members. We got to get to a few hundred, mm. and but I want them all to just be ripping through life. Like, I'll introduce you a few of their guys. They're already all making 10, 20K a month because I, I showed them a few things in business. But I need them to, I just want to see just monsters, like wolves all across the globe, brother, just winning. So, and, and really pushing that. I love it. Oh, when it's one thing to win on your own, but when you're winning as a team, that, that vibration is like different dog. You know what I mean? When you, when you have that group of, and especially when it's like alpha dudes, all kicking ass, married to great women, great fathers, great businessmen, super fit. Like when all that is in one group, bro, nobody could touch that group of men. Nobody. Oh man. Oh, man. I, I want I when the way I envision it, is that it becomes kind of like a, like I'm a I'm a Freemason, right? I'm, I'm part of that, right. that society. When I think about the Wolf Pack, I really wanted to become like a society of brothers across the planet. Like, yo, you in Miami, you hit up a wolf. What's up? We're congruent. We can hold each other accountable, and then you're connected to the right places. You know, that's that's the vision. Brotherhood, man, I love it. I love it, bro. And last question for you, my friend. How do you want to be remembered? Man, that's a fuck. I've never even thought about that. I've never even thought about that, man. First thought is a good father. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'll just mm. give you the first thought that came to my heart, bro. I just want to be a good dad. Mm. I guess father could mean a lot of things. You know, as you grow up, a father is somebody that looks over and brings up an individual. So it could be father of the world, could be a good father, just my, my daughter and my son. But mm. yeah, a good father, as, as small, as finite as that could sound, or as large as that could sound, I want both. Love it, man. Yeah, we're... We're slowly realizing how important fatherhood is in a person's life. Not just like a biological father, but just a male figure that is that mentor and that guide in your life. You know what I mean? 
that's super important. And it's, it's become more prevalent than ever in 2023. Dude, that's for sure. Absolutely, bro. See, I never looked up to my dad at all, bro. Cause he'd be, I don't want to talk shit about my dad, but he was a piece of shit. You know, I don't want to, you know, wash dirty laundry in public. But let's just say, when I looked at him as a kid, I'm like, this ain't who, no. So what I did is I got a book of John D. Rockefeller mm. called Titan. It's his autobiography. And I would just read that over and over and over again. And in my head, as a kid growing up, John D. Rockefeller will be my dad. Mm. And that was my dad. And I would just do that over and over and over again, man. So, yeah, it's important to have that father figure you look up to. Super important, man. Isaac, thank you so much for being on my show. I appreciate you, man. Big okay, we got to reconnect. Hit me up when you're in the city, man, when you're in Miami. We got to get together. Uh, let's get it. Appreciate <laughs> you. Last thing, how can people connect with you? Bro, DMs, Instagram is the best. You go on at Isaac B Global. We'll put the link somewhere in there, right? Shoot yep. me a DM. I always reply. I'm always on this, bro. Let's get it. Dope. Isaac, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, dog. Till the next time. All righty, guys. Another episode of Montana Method Podcast. Your host, Nelson, with my special guest, Isaac. Push it to the limit. The world is yours. And as I always say, guys, always, always, always chase the dream. Because if you're not chasing a dream, life is meaningless. See you on the next one. We out. I've been out here hustling all my life. Yeah, we get into it. Yeah. Really, I hear any streets that stay at night. Like there's nothing to it. Yeah. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. Yeah. I never asked for nothing, no. <laughs> but now I want it all. Yeah. Yeah. I promise I'ma do it. Came from rags to riches. Yeah. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Yeah. Rags to riches. Came from rags.